Hello, ladies, and welcome back to Real Men, Real Insights. Today, we're going to talk about what you should do when he pulls away. I'm, of course, your fierce host, Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And I have a very special friend and expert here, which is Chris Sider, who will actually answer this question. Hey, Chris. How are you doing? First off, I want to say thank you for getting my last name correct. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, that's what happens when you're German, you know, like. Right, right. Because the last name's kind of, a lot of people call me Cedar. Cedar, yes. Right? So it, it always makes me kind of be like, do I correct them or not? You know, it's their show. I don't want to like, but right. yeah. Maybe you, not in the middle of it, maybe afterwards, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, ladies, for those of you who don't know Chris Sido, he's the founder of Ex-Boyfriend Recovery, and he's been helping thousands of brokenhearted individuals with their exes back for over a decade. So one successful strategy he often recommends is the no contact rule. Think of it as shutting down communication between exes for a certain period of time in order to create space for each partner, which allows for healing, self-recovery, and an opportunity for both partners to potentially come back together. Chris believes this can be the key to long-lasting success. Along with his handpicked coaches, he helps guide their clients using proven concepts and create psychological methods to reattract their access and win them back for good. Currently, Chris offers his weekly advice through his podcast, together which generate over 100,000 downloads. And of course, his YouTube Page currently has over almost 60,000 subscribers now. And Chris has been featured in many different publications, including outlets such as Fox and HollywoodLife.com. And he is available for interviews and podcasts on all things dating and helping win your ex back during the toughest of times. All right. Let's just give a round of applause. That was like, you, you nailed it. You know, and even there was like, we just hit over 60,000 subscribers now. And so the, the thing I gave her said 50,000 and she just so smoothly just put that in there. So Antia, you are a boss. Let me just say that, that was pretty impressive. Oh, uh, well, I give credit where credit is due, you know, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> hey, so Chris, so let's talk about it. So tell women just a little bit before we go into the juicy, like how into the juicy content, like. How did you become a, a ex -boy, ex boyfriend and ex girlfriend a breakup person, right? Breakup. Well, yeah. So I mean, it's a long story, but basically, it went like this. Uh, I did not choose to become this. I just sort of stumbled into it, like all good things in life. So basically, uh, in college, I was sitting next to a a girl, and she, her, and I became friends. And she moved away to be with this guy. And uh, I texted her one day saying like, hey, where'd you go? And she's like, oh yeah, I moved away. I'm, I'm with my boyfriend. We're about to get engaged. And I said, oh, good for you. Well, anyways, fast forward a couple of months, she texts me again saying that he had just broken up with her and she's like devastated. And you kind of do that thing that you do when someone tells you something like that. You're like, oh, I, yeah, that, that really sucks. You kind of empathize a little bit and then you kind of move on with your life. Well, the next day after that, she told me I'm pregnant. And so then she just started quizzing me all about all kinds of things related to, to breakups and like the men's perspective. And I was tinkering around with websites at the time, trying to learn like coding and how it all worked and how it was all put together. And so I just decided to kind of create a website to, to, hold, to house my notes. And um, as I started just sort of writing down what was working, what wasn't working, uh, she ended up getting her ex back and lo and behold, a lot of random people were reading my articles and commenting. And so it just became this gigantic thing where I just kept looking at it like a science, refining the process every two or three years with new research, understanding what's working for real people. And we were able to kind of understand there's not a lot of research out there on how to not only get exes back, but how to effectively get over exes if that's the choice that you want to choose. Um, there is some research, but not a lot of research. So we kind of just created our own, you know, ecosystem to understand how breakups work. And so that's sort of the, the, the accident theory of how I got into uh, breakup recovery. I just like love that because it's a story of service. 
like you weren't going in there because oh there's a lot of money or you know there's not that much competition or whatever right like you actually got in there yeah. because fun were- fun Fun fact, um, I was so adamant about not making money off of people, brokenhearted individuals that I was spending like five or eight, five, like five to six, five to eight, five to six hours a day answering people who were leaving comments, who were emailing me and just giving them free advice. And my dad said like, Chris, you need to start making money from this. Like you are going to go broke. You're a broke college kid. You don't have any money. So I eventually relented. So the money part came afterwards, but, but uh, yeah, you're right. It, it, there was a very service oriented um, goal behind it at first. Oh, I love that. So today we're going to talk about what to do when he pulls away. So what in the heck is the woman going to do if she she was all excited and she had fantastic dates with him and he maybe even told her, that he's interested, attracted to her, but then all of a sudden he pulls back. Yeah. So this is actually kind of interesting because there's a lot of different theories behind what happens. We often see this a lot of times when we tell our clients to kind of reconnect with their exes. Now it's not exactly apples to oranges here um, because, you know, with, with a, with a breakup, there's a lot more involved than a opposed to you know, as opposed to a situation where you haven't dated the person before. But what we found in breakups specifically is a lot of times there's three things that occur that that are reasons for why a guy would pull away. The first one is very tactical, and that's the sort of text message or attempt that you use to reach out to, to your ex. A lot of times we find our clients, we always tell them to text first because that's kind of the safest way of just sort of re-breaking the building rapport essentially but we find that a lot of times what ends up happening is they'll send kind of a very complacent type of a text you know you get into these relationship patterns and you're kind of just like hey or what's up or that's that was your go-to to kind of start a conversation well that could be one reason why they're just sort of not going to engage with you because they're thinking like they're not invested i'm not going to give them the time of day the second reason is not enough time has gone by potentially, especially in a breakup situation where they feel comfortable responding. Now, this is not going to be likely the issue that most of, I think your listeners are going to be having. Most of your listeners probably aren't trying to get exes back. They're trying to figure out like, why the heck isn't this guy that I really like engaging with me? Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing that we found is a lot of times the topic of your text, if you can make your text message or whatever the conversation is about something that they are interested in, you'll find they're a lot more likely to engage. You know, we did this study on understanding the levers of love, like what are the factors that create the chemicals that make someone fall, fall in love. And one of those chemicals or one of those levers is similarities. So a lot of times, if you can find this common ground of a, an interesting topic that your, your partner or your ex or whoever you're trying to attract is really into, as well as something that you're really into, it kind of connects the two of you and you can have a little bit of an easier way of getting them to pay attention to you. Yeah, that's so good, right? Like just actually um, because oftentimes like women, they don't know how to relate to a man, yeah. right? And they make approach things too emotionally. But what if you deal with a more masculine man who doesn't have like, you know, like men use over 10,000 words less than women and the more masculine they are, the less access they're going to have to particularly emotionally descriptive. Um, yeah. You know, right. Well, well, so what's also interesting is uh, as you were talking and talking about how men aren't very, I don't know if you actually said this, but it's almost implied they're not as good at words as women are. You know, they're not as good at maybe getting their emotions out as, mm-hmm. as women are. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that we found a lot of success with actually has nothing to do with your initial conversations with the person you're talking to, but rather the sphere of influence. Now, I, I kind of came up with this conflict, uh, this concept that revolves around exes, but I, I, th- I think it applies to all people. We all surround ourselves with individuals who opinions that we care about a lot. So sometimes this can be friends, sometimes this can be family, sometimes this can be like a coworker, and there's always kind of a different variation of the sphere of influence. But basically the people that your partner surrounds themselves with, if you can get them to be saying nice things about you to your partner, it works really well. And if you think about it, it makes sense because like from a sales perspective, a lot of times you're a lot more likely to trust the opinion of a friend saying like, I got this shirt. This is like the best shirt ever versus like me coming on a YouTube ad or a 
TV saying like, buy this shirt, you know, like you're going to trust your friend a lot more. And this is kind of like this ninja tactic that a lot of people don't know about. Mm, so it's, a, it's a little sneaky, right? It's like, <laughs> my friend does that sometimes. She's like, can you just tell this guy, you know what I mean? Like a little bit more about my business and what I do and all that. I was like, no, 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 no. But it's like, it's a, it's a good idea, right? So what, what else can a woman do? when and maybe also like what she shouldn't do because like she's probably done a lot of things she shouldn't do and yeah. that's why she's watching this video right now yeah i think one of the big things that they shouldn't do is um all right so you and me auntie we have this shared love of attachment styles mm -hmm. right so i think anytime and it's hard to do this when you are kind of subservient to an anxious attachment style. You know, you, you exhibit a lot of anxious behaviors. And it's really hard sometimes for people like that to self-diagnose and realize, wait, I'm being a little too anxious. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make, especially when they really, really like the guy, is they push too hard to try to make it work right away when they need to be pulling back and just waiting or being patient mm -hmm. or exhibiting some sort of secure attachment vibes as opposed mm -hmm. to the anxious attachment vibes that they're they're um, sort of putting out there into the universe or to their partner who or the, the potential partner who they're interested in um, dating you know so I think that's pretty much the big issue we see all around and I'm pretty sure you probably see this with your clients as well right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, it's really interesting. People always try to break through the anxious attachment, right? But it's more about like relating in a confident way to, the, to your attachment because the attachment, it's an internal working model. It's not just going to change overnight, right? Yeah, like people always no. think, yes, the magic formula and I'm going to be healed. No, actually the healing in and of itself is actually positively relating, confidently relating to your insecurity, right? It's almost like saying, be secure in your insecurity, like advocate for your mm -hmm. insecurity versus, uh, versus almost like denying it or, or kind of like ju judging it for sure. Right. Yeah, like hi hiding, hiding the fact it. that you have the right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or for that. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I can become anxious sometimes. Right. Well, part of me can become anxious sometimes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the, the other interesting thing I see, or, or, or maybe the misconception I see is, no, I don't know about you, but we're dealing a lot with, you know, breakups, right? So we always find that the anxious attachment person is going to be drawn to the avoidant attachment person. Mm -hmm. And this is an, an extremely difficult situation to be in because they're like polar opposites, right? Uh, but one thing I always tell the anxious attachment, so almost always, it's always the client, our clients are the anxious attachment ones and their exes are the avoidant attachment ones. And this is one of the primary reasons why the breakup probably occurred. But what, what's interesting is when I try to explain to someone with a bit more anxious tendencies, how an avoidant works, um, it kind of blows their mind. So some of the research we found basically explains that avoidance have this in, intense self of like this intense longing for a relationship, but they, they really value their independence. So they kind of push, push mm -hmm. that, that relationship away. And what's interesting is when you look at when an avoidant would potentially miss someone, uh, it's usually not until they feel safe and they only feel safe when they think the anxious person has moved on. And this is actually the, the way I would relate it back to pushing too hard for someone who, um, you know, you, you're trying to date is one of the worst things you can do is push sometimes, especially if you're dealing with an avoidant, because that will just make them retreat further, but also they're not going to feel comfortable romanticizing whatever moments or whatever chemistry the two of you had until they feel like, wow, okay, there's no chance we could ever get back together or we could ever get together. And that's when they feel like, oh, wow, that, that was actually a really strong connection I had. And it's this really weird foreign concept to our clients who have these anxious attachment styles. But this is one of the reasons why, you know, you read the, the long bio that I had about the no contact rule. This is one of the primary reasons why we find the no contact rule being so effective because so many of our clients' exes are avoidant attachment styles. 
Mm -hmm, totally, totally. And, and when you do even further research, right, you actually go into that most women, at least that come to me, are actually fearful avoidance. So that actually means they also have an avoidant part inside of themselves. So they are primarily anxious, but they also have a good amount of avoidance inside right. of themselves. But of course, that's that, that they don't want to see that or they don't see that because you don't see it if you're interacting with, an, with a dismissive avoidant attachment style because, you know, that makes you anxious. So you're not thinking about your avoidant. But if the same woman would actually uh, date an anxious, just try it out, ladies. You know what I mean? You, you will get to know your avoidant part, right? <laughs> like, right. You're like, oh, yeah. there's that part that wants to have space and doesn't want to feel invaded. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it really is situational based on the person that you're dating or want to date, right? So um, I would also say like, knowing yourself or knowing your own attachment style is, is key, but also knowing your partner's attachment style is, is key as well. So you can figure out how to relate to them in a, in a, in a better way and understand like, okay, I need to back off here or I need to push harder here or whatever. Totally. Totally. Can you tell us a story with like specific examples where a man was pulling away and what you taught a woman and how it helped her to yeah to actually get him back, so to say. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it's really interesting because one thing, one, one of the first success stories that I personally interviewed on my YouTube channel, you can actually just go watch the, I interviewed her twice. She got her ex back and her ex basically said something along the lines of, I hate you. I never loved you. We're never getting back together. And we diagnosed him as having avoidant tendencies. And the reason why is he you was, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> So the, the reason why the breakup ultimately occurred was because she wasn't a horrible, anxious type of a person, but she had some of those tendencies and she was really pushing for a deeper commitment. Mm. And so we advised her to do a no contact rule. And we also told her and, and kind of explained to her, like, look, the point everyone thinks the no contact rule, because the no contact rule, it's basically this period of time where you're going to ignore your ex, no matter the situation. There's a few discrepancies there, but we're just going to use a general, we'll just use her situation. You're ignoring them for anywhere between 21 to 45 days. Now this all, this helps with those avoided tendencies, but that's not the entire point of it. The entire point of it is a lot of times people think that no contact is something that you can use to make your ex miss you or make this person miss you. We found that the people who went into it with that intent had the opposite results the people who went into it with the intent of outgrowing their ex, not being so reliant on them, being more secure, they tended to get those like, oh, I miss you. So we we kind of explained to her like, hey, this is what we think you should be doing during no contact. We kind of explained this holy trinity idea that we have called health, wealth, relationships. And you're trying to get all three in balance. So like health, you know, maybe you felt like you were not eating the proper diet and it made you feel bad about yourself. Well, this is an opportunity to fix that wealth. You know, maybe you were not trying your hardest to work. Well, this is an opportunity to fix that. And just by doing those two things, you'll notice your relationship aspect of friends, family start to gravitate towards you more. And it just becomes this domino effect. We really got her to focus on that during no contact. And lo and behold, he shows up at our house one day, knock, knock, knock. I want you back. Now, what's interesting is I said, I interviewed her twice. He broke up with her again. So here's what happened. She got him back. Then he proposed to her. And then after he proposed to her, broke up with her again, because that independence, you know, that he, all of a sudden that's become super threatened. So, I mean, they, they maybe lasted like a couple of months of being engaged, but he just couldn't take it. So we just said, Hey, this isn't anything abnormal. We, this is a pattern for his. So we just said, do the same thing over again, but we want you to date someone new now. And so him seeing her date someone new triggered that avoidant side where he was like, okay, well now I feel comfortable missing her. And then he came begging for her back again, but she didn't want him back. So there, there's your story. Yeah, no, I actually love that because what you said, right? It was such a dysfunctional pattern that like, you know, that was actually her healing. That's actually, right. the only, that's why I love this story is because that's actually what you really want. That's what, that's what all women really want. They really want to heal. They want to feel the peace, right? But I think that's going to happen when they're getting into a relationship. But maybe they need to actually heal first by actually not wanting. You would wanting be so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. You'd be so surprised that like when I interview, so I, 
I am one of the only sort of breakup people out there that will sit down for an hour to interview people. And I do this not because I'm like, Hey, look at all the success stories I have. I do this because I want to understand what patterns are being exhibited. And this uncanny pattern just always consistently happens. And it's the healing part you talk about. That's why we kind of redefine this no contact period is not a way to make your ex miss you, which was the original intent. We change it to outgrow. Totally. Be better. Mm -hmm. be more secure. And that gets the results. So you're, you're spot on with, with that. It's so true, Chris, because it really reminds me of um, the story I experienced in January of 2013, five months before I met Brody. And it was the same thing. It was like a guy I could never get. And, you know, he wouldn't call me and da, 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 da. And then I just had this breakthrough of like, I'm not like I've been waiting for my dad to turn around his whole life. I'm so sick and tired of waiting. And I had this breakthrough. And of course, that guy came back, right? And actually pursued me in a way I always wanted to be pursued because that's always the initiation, right? It's like, right. really? Are you sure you all don't want this anymore? <laughs> and I didn't want him anymore because like once you heal, right? Once you really get this, you're like, no, 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 no. My man knows. My man doesn't need to think about it. He doesn't get cold feet. He's not like inconsistent all the time and needs to heal. He is already healed to a certain degree. Sure, we're always a little bit healing together, of course, right? But like he is stable enough to take ownership and responsibility over his emotional reactions versus acting on them every single time, right? And so that's like, that's the exact same story. It's always the same story. You'll heal first. And yeah, I think there's no it, coincidence that I met Brody five months later. It's, it's really uncanny how it happens. I mean, like I, I literally tried to the best, the best explanation I could ever find for it. What like, because it seems kind of like mumbo jumbo type, like, Oh yeah, the universe, you're putting like energy out there. Well, uh -huh. that's really hard to quantify on a scientific level, but the best way I could always quantify it is if you're sort of shifting your attachment style to, to more secure vibes, somehow your ex is able to read that in your body language and the way you talk. And, and that is the best way I've explained it. So I think bef like if you're having trouble keeping a guy engaged, it might, and I'm not saying it's, it's necessarily like, Oh, you're not, you don't have a secure attachment. You're, you're, but it might be that you're not getting those kind of nonverbal vibes out for him to like pick up and read. Now they're all the, like the thing about like, Hey, like, talk about topics that they're actually interested in. So you can kind of engage and get, get rapport going. That's important too, but it, it's also the, the, that mindset you need to have is so important before you, you try to attract anyone. Absolutely. So true. Well, I could talk to you forever, Chris, like it's so incredible. So I hope you learned a lot, ladies, what to do when he pulls away. So Chris, for the women who were really enamored with the content, that you shared and would love to learn more about how they continue the journey with you. What's your free gift that you have for them? Yeah. So uh, the free gift that I have is on my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. We've put together a special quiz that's designed to tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. Now, if you're not interested in getting your ex back and you're, you're going through a breakup, that's fine. I would still recommend that you take this quiz because this will tell you whether or not you should be trying to get them back or trying to move on. And just, it's also kind of a fun thing to be able to say like, oh, okay, this is where I sort of stand. So yeah, just go to my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com and the quiz should be featured there on the homepage. Just follow the instructions there and it's like two minutes, it's free and you'll get sort of an idea. I just love that, right? Because sometimes we really need to get some sort of like baseline because we're so in the clouds, you know, we don't even know everything is so right. inside of ourselves. So, so ladies, get that, get your butt over there to that website. And the link of course is right below this video. Chris, thank you so much for being here today. Like it's so fun to hear more about your stories. You always have like a new story to share. I'm always like, what stories are you going to share this time? <laughs> um, and I love it that it's also based on so much research and such a strong foundation that it stands on. So thank you for that. Thank you so much for having me. This was, this was a blast. Yay. All right, ladies. I will talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.